Well, hello everybody. We're finally getting started. We were having audio issues. Apparently, my last audio uh, video, the sound sounded really bad. So I had to correct that and I finally got it better. I hope it works well. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go ahead and start with the president because I've only got about a half an hour before I can uh, uh, have to be at work. So we're going to go ahead and start. El día de hoy vamos a informar sobre eh, la subasta. So today we're going to be informing regarding the auction para la venta de aviones for the sale of uh, airplanes y de helicópteros and helicopters del gobierno that of the government. Como ustedes eh, saben and as you already know, we made a decision in order to sail, to sell the airplanes and the helicopters that were being utilized to, to uh, transport uh, high-level officials. So airplanes that were luxury vehicles and they have nothing to do with the reality of poverty que en país. that exists in our country. Eso, eh, es un reflejo Es una expresión de that, cómo is, that is a reflection. It's an expression of how dos mundos. there were two worlds. El mundo del pueblo, the world of the, el of the people and the world and the world of the governors or gov dos government. Distintas. Two separate spheres. While the people didn't even didn't even have for the most indispensable things, for the basic things, in order to satisfy their basic necessities, and the functioning officials. Uh, with the money of the people, no it's este, not theirs. It belongs to the people. It, it does not belong to the public service. We are simply ad uh, administrators of the funds of the people. Pues and the functioning officials, se they felt like they were kings. Era como una it was like a monarchy, Creole. like a Creole mo monarchy. Y vivían colmados de lujos and they lived y de full of privileges and luxuries. And for that reason, we decided to sell these airplanes y que solo los and that only que the se air para la airplanes that were used for security by the military, marina, the marines, they're the only ones that we would, would have permission or authorization to be utilizing airplanes. Everything at the service of the people. Uh, ambulances in the air. Uh, equipment to turn off fires or put out fires. And of course, public security, civil protection. Pero no para but not to transport func high functioning officials. They abused it. They even used the airplanes to, and the helicopters to go play golf. Entonces, vamos a, a informar sobre esta subasta. 
So we're going to be informing regarding this auction. It's taken some time because we have to put all the documents in order. Because these airplanes are in different areas of government with credit or on credit or rented. And so we had to clear everything up, and it's a complex process for the sale of these airplanes. And in all this process that was already initiated, we have a uh, been accompanied by the ONU, the Office of Transparency called ONU, so that we can comply with all the procedures. That we not sell them too cheaply, uh, low prices, but instead it should be based on the value or appraisals. And they have to do some follow up on this. And it's transparent completely. So we're going to have Jorge Mendoza, who's been in charge of this whole process. Well, Banobras was the bank that used to finance this, or the majority of these acquisitions of airplanes. And for, the, for that reason, we had him take over since the beginning. <laughs> and I also invited the general of the defense. Because they, they took over the care of the uh, fleet of airplanes. And we're also asking the um, Air Force, because they're specialists, and they understand about these airplanes and helicopters. Manuel de Jesus Hernández González is the commander of the Air Force. And we'll listen now what Jorge Mendoza. Jorge Mendoza is informing us over this. Hello, very good day to all, one and all. First, I want to show you a video of the airplanes or the air vehicles. So it's dated 13th of January. That's how many airplanes they have. That's the presidential airplane. You can see the luxury in there. Look at that. Very nice looking. There's the inside. A helicopter. So if they were being misused, the government took them back so that um, high level officials were just using them for their own like if they were their own private property. So he made sure that they don't get it. <laughs> wow. B-300. 
Tucker. EC225 LP. Looks like another helicopter. A332? And that was the government of Mexico. That was their video. Recapitulando sobre las acciones eh, pendientes hasta el día de hoy eh, en lo relacionado con la enajenación de las aeronaves, eh, quisiera recordar que el presidente nos instruyó identificar todas aquellas aeronaves que no tuvieran vocación clara en beneficio de la ciudadanía. So the president had. So uh, the president had asked us to review all the airplanes and to see which ones were uh, being is, um, used improperly, specifically and um, impo most importantly, uh, the ones that were being used by uh, government executives or high-level officials. De los servidores públicos. Public service. Después de un análisis and que se llevó after a cabo we de analyzed it, uh, we uh, discovered 72 airplanes. Uh, 33 aviones y 39 helicópteros. 33 airplanes uh, and 33 uh, helicopters? De 8 instituciones. Of 8 institutions. Estos 72 aeronaves incluyen el avión presidencial, conocido como el TP-01. Okay, so here you can see the list. The presidential airplane. Um, there's 38 commercials uh, F for the FGR. I'm not sure what that is. One that was belonged uh, to the Pemex company. Four that were in maintenance and 28 uh, that are um, uh, being taken uh, due to, uh, I guess, misuse. Okay. We'll go with that. 38 aeronaves que serán enajenadas por la Fiscalía General de la República como órgano autónomo. So these are the 28 are being taken uh, back by the uh, district attorney or the um, the head uh, uh, legal department from the um, different uh, states that have been uh, misappropriating or misusing funds. Una a ser enajenada por Pemex a un tercero, cuatro que se encuentran hoy día en mantenimiento y 28. So Pemex had uh, set one aside for a third party, which was the one one of the ones they're taking back. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead because I, my time is short and I do want to uh, uh, have uh, as much of this as I could for you. Okay, let's see this. This is... So they're going to be auctioning. So this is the list of all the airplanes that are going to be sold at auction. All right. And I'm going to go ahead of that because... Puerta más alta considerando el valor mínimo de venta. El registro estará abierto a partir de hoy y hasta el 31 de enero de 2020. La convocatoria la pueden encontrar en la página. So this is the page you would go to if you wanted to check out uh, and register to buy an airplane. Um, you can just go to that website. Okay. Los concluye el 31 de enero. Esto será seguido por una segunda fase. Okay, now this is going to be followed by a second phase. Y también finalmente podrán presentar. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead because I recuerdo que desde diciembre de 2018 la aeronave ha Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go past that. Este es el tema de hoy. 
So this is the matter for today. And, and they're inviting you to participate in this auction for the sale of airplanes and helicopters. We are sure we're going to be successful, and it takes time because it's a lot of money. We're talking about just in this phase more than 5,000 uh, million pesos. And of course, we require buyers nationals and foreign uh, and yes there are there are people that want to participate in this auction and besides that to help us because the money we're going to get will be returned to the people this will permit us to have resources to buy equipment that is needed in hospitals, x-rays, tomography, ambulances, just to speak of uh, the health care needs, but how many other needs aren't there and demand of the people. And besides that, the more time we have, this time, this fleet, the more it costs us. Because you have to pay for maintenance. But of course, even just sitting there, it's not going to be more than it used to be. Because the cost of operation was very elevated. Do you recall that last uh, flight that was done in the presidential airplane? I think Argentina or Colombia. Oh, Argentina. The expenses. I recall that they charged... Uh, the presidential state charged only, or they paid for simply a bill for uh, internet service on that flight, seven million pesos. Do you remember how many uh, shavers, creams, tampoco they didn't obey re they didn't obey reality they were false uh, receipts anyway because they were considered uh, national safety expenses then they could uh, they had the authorization to not present documentation. And they did this a lot in the government with uh, using the matter of uh, public security or safety. But now, without using that, and if you maintain them, we are saving, saving money. A lot. Very much. Because they're not being used, these airplanes. Well, that is to, to move uh, public servants. So now, we're going to allow them to be sold according to their value. And Jorge said something very important. The minimum is what it's valued at, or the appraisal. It's like vehicles that we've auctioned, the jewels, or goods that are properties in Los Pinos, that they have a price value, and then you start from there. 
and people make offers. And then the highest is the one that gives to keep the good. So it'll be like that. So now we're opening the floor. Okay, you guys, I am so sorry, but my time is gone. Um, perhaps I can do more of this tonight. I'm not sure. I'm not going to promise because I may have to stay for a double shift, but I just had to make sure that I did at least one today. You're welcome to uh, watch this video um, in Spanish, and uh, it's in the President's uh, channel, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. And uh, if you have any understanding of Spanish, you'll be able to uh, see what else happened. There was a lot of information. Uh, he talked a lot about um, how they misused funds and uh, how um, they had no, um, well, they didn't care about the people at all. So um, they were living in the lap of luxury while the people were living in dire poverty and uh, things were unattended. Um, hospitals and and also there was a uh, talk just so you know or later on this uh, they talked about uh, some uh, states uh, some governors um, are refusing to accept the free medical uh, for their people uh, because they right now they have control over the funds that are spent on uh, uh, in hospitals and uh, for medicines and equipment and all that. And um, it is believed that they are misappropriating those funds as well. So of course they're not gonna want to, but in any case, um, the president says, hey, you know, you are um, uh, able to do what you choose to do. We're not gonna force you to do anything. But of course, I'm sure the people are not gonna tolerate that because the president is offering, the government is offering to follow the law and give the people their free medical care paid for by the government. Uh, but if the states refuse to use that money um, or allow their uh, citizens to uh, get the free medical care and, and education and anything else that is offered by the government, I'm sure they're not going to be very popular with their uh, uh, constituents. So I hope they get their heads on straight. Um, because it probably won't go very well for them. Uh, so that's just, um, for the most part, I believe that most of them have already accepted it. And uh, they're, um, the government is paying and giving them extra funds uh, for the, you know, what is required and paying for the medications and all that. Because medications, medical care, and medical supplies, of course, everything uh, is now free as guaranteed by the Mexican Constitution, which I hope we could do here in the U.S. That would be so nice. All right. Anyway, have a great day. Enjoy. Bye.